Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I was just working out. Guys, do you even... Do you even lift? What is up, guys? PK here. So, like, this guy walks up to me, right? And he's like, Hey, bro, do you even lift, man? Do you even lift? I'm like, bitch, please. I cast Vin God in Leviosa all the time, man. <laughs> what is up, guys? Um, now, there's a new class. Queen, Queen of Thorns. Queen, Sister of the Thorns? I think it's Sister of the Thorns. Ain't nobody got time for that. Figure out what the class's name is. Who cares? Doesn't matter. <laughs> In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the new class, of course. Now, uh, what we're not going to do in today's video is cover every single aspect of the new class. There's simply too much to go through. We are, however, going to cover every single talent in detail. Then we're going to talk about the two primary builds that I believe are... I mean, we're going to talk about the strongest build, in my opinion, which is with the Moonfire Bow. And then we're going to talk about a staff build, because the staff is just too much fun, right? Lifting up Chaos Warriors, it's just too good of a time. So uh, I apologize for not finishing this video last night as planned, but I legitimately had not slept since the elf was released so i needed some sleep okay <laughs> and i got it so great <laughs> anyways let's get to it so here she is the long-awaited new carillion class sister of the thorn now not not to brag or anything but uh i was totally right about that no okay let's get over that <laughs> i'm just kidding uh it didn't come from me anyways, but regardless, let's take a look at the new class. So, starting off, the first thing you need to know about this class is obviously the basics regarding her ultimate. Now, we're just going to remove all of our talents here, so you guys can see exactly what her ultimate ability does. Now, it essentially creates a wall of thorns that blocks projectiles both from friendlies and from enemy minions. Now, it lasts for a total of 6 seconds. And on top of that, she has a passive ability which allows her a secondary cast that has a 60 second cooldown. When you're using your ultimate ability, it's always going to prioritize your actual career ability cooldown over the 60 second secondary cast. Uh, in, a, in other words, assuming your career ability is off cooldown, the regular cooldown, that's always the one it's going to uh, consume. And the cluster of radiance is going to be the secondary consumption. As for her passive abilities, First, we got a Murder of Spites. Carillion deals up to 50% more damage to wounded targets depending on their remaining health. In other words, the, the lower their health, like the, the less health they have remaining percentage-wise, the more damage you deal, up to a maximum of 50% extra damage. Then we got a Sustenance of Leechlings. Whenever another party member receives temporary health while at full health, Carillion gains temporary health instead. In other words, whenever someone is full health, and that goes for full health with temporary health as well, and they are uh, attacking stuff, or let's say Mercenary uses his career ability, and everyone else is full, you're actually going to get the stack from each of your teammates that were hit, assuming they were all full health. In other words, it can just boost you up to full health like that. Especially because on top of that, you have an attendance of munificence. Munificence? Is that a word? Munificence? Never heard that word before. I mean, I assume it's a word since it's, you know, in the video game, but, but, <laughs> munificence. I'll have to look that up. Anyways, all healing received by the party is increased by 25%, which means everyone in the party, for those of you that have been watching my videos for some time now, know that healing received translates into temporary HP generated. In other words, your passive is just generating 25% more temporary HP for your teammates in general, uh, just as a permanent passive. And the interesting thing that I haven't actually gotten around to test yet, so you'll have to, to <laughs> give me some more time on this one, but is if you think about it this way, let's say that uh, a Celid, right? Let's just say that he, he's generating one temporary HP per attack, just for an example. Now he's generating 1.25 temporary health per attack. Now if he's at full temporary HP, like at full health, 
then he's gonna generate 1.25 temporary health for you. However, does that then also affect you, the 25%? In other words, is it then gonna be an extra 25% of 1.25 health, or is it just gonna be flat out 1.25? I'm not entirely sure, and I'll, I'll have to do more testing, but something to, to keep in mind at least. But anyways, with that covered, let's take a look at her talents. First, we got Weave Bond, Martial Blessing, and Eternal Blossom. Being the classic temporary HP generating talent, we got Weave Bond, which is based off critical hits, Martial Blessing, which is based off of kills, and then of course we got Heal Share. Now, we're not going to talk about Heal Share. Martial Blessing and Weave Bond are the two sort of sources of temporary HP talents that you're primarily going to get. Now, the two builds that I, I've been using here are using two different talents for generating temporary HP. In my opinion, Weave Bond is only the right choice if you're getting the guaranteed critical hits strikes, which you're going to be using in combination with Authority, Authority's Delight, but we'll get into that in more detail momentarily. Uh, and Martial Blessing would then be what you're going to be using whenever you don't go for the guaranteed critical hits. Level 10, Surge of Mallets, while it's above 90% health, you gain 15% attack speed. Important to note here that you don't need to be 90% green health, it can just be 10% green health and the rest temporary HP and it's still going to proc. Arthari's Delight, Critical Strikes makes the target bleed, in other words it applies a bleed effect whenever you have a critical hit. Now the interesting here, the thing to note here uh, when you're using the stuff is that let's say you have a guaranteed critical hit, right? If I were to do like this, right, let's just say it's a crit, then the the bleed isn't going to stack. That is to say, you're not going to be tr applying bleed three times to the same target. Oh, you are, but the damage isn't going to stack, right? It's just going to reset sort of the, the, the same timer of the bleed on that target. In other words, the, the bleed effect is not a mechanic that actually stacks on top of itself. However, this is a single attack, right? But it has three projectiles. So the interesting thing to note about this attack is it only counts as one attack, right? So when you're looking at these three guaranteed critical hits, one attack only consumes one charge, which means one attack, w when you sort of, when you have a guaranteed critical hit on this one attack, then you have a guaranteed critical hit on all three projectiles, even though it's only a single critical hit. And all three projectiles can apply a bleed to a separate target. So that's an interesting thing to note uh, in order to obtain maximum value from your critical hit bleed. Um, then you've got Isha's Bounty, gaining health, grants 5% power for 8 seconds, stacks up to 3 times. Just to give you guys an example, you could put on Natural Bonds, I wouldn't recommend it, but just for uh, sake of the example here, understanding the mechanics, if you were to put on Natural Bonds, which gives you health every 5 seconds, this would just be permanently procced as 15% extra power. Then we got Smiter, Mainstay, and Enhanced Power. Now, for both of my builds, I'm going to be running Enhanced Power, I wouldn't say that it's impossible that both Mainstay and Smiter are options depending on your uh, your primary weapon and your play types. But for the sake of simplicity here, again, we can't cover every single niche and, and, and sort of aspect in this video. I've only had since yesterday, right? So I had to limit the scope a little bit. We're going to be running Enhanced Power for now, which is also going to increase the damage of your career ability. And there, there's a bunch of other reasons, which we'll get to momentarily. Then you got Incandescence, which gives you an extra stack of this cluster of Radiance, essentially putting an extra 60 second timer. So, so you have your career ability, right? And, and sort of, you have the 60 second timer, you get a, a passive buff, which gives you that extra cast. With this talent, there's going to be another 60 second timer that's going to start after the first 60 second timer, which is going to give you a secondary stack into, you know, 60 seconds after the first 60 seconds, right? Then you've got Hikari's Cruel Bargain. For each elite enemy slain near Kirillion, the cooldown of Radiance decreases by one second. That's pretty self-explanatory. Whenever an elite is killed in your near vicinity, uh, this passive here, these 60 seconds, are going to be reduced by an extra second. Then we have Radiant Inheritance, which is quite possibly the single strongest talent uh, on the class Sister of Thorns. I see literally no serious scenario in the current patch where you're not running Radiant Inheritance. Now, if we read, it says consuming Radiance grants Kirillian vastly increased combat potency for 15 seconds. Uh, Radiance being her, uh, her passive secondary cast, right? Now, what does increased combat potency mean? Well, it means that for 15 seconds, you gain 50% power, 20% attack speed, 20% crit chance, 40% crit power, 
and 30% movement speed. Uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for 15 seconds. That's a quarter of the time. And it's applied literally on command, right? Insane. By far the stronger and single most important talent, in my opinion. Moving on to level 25, we got the Pale Queen's Choosing. Every 8 seconds, Kavillion's next ranged attack consumes no resource and restores 3 permanent health. Again, works in combination with Isha's Bounty, which is one of the builds we'll get to momentarily. Morai Hex Doomsight gained 3 guaranteed critical hit strikes each time a career skill is used. That is to say, any career skill from any player at any time is going to give you 3 charges of guaranteed critical hits. Now the interesting thing here is they are consumed by attacks even if the attack doesn't actually physically encounter anything. In other words, if I am to use an ulti here, you can see I have like the number 3 in the middle of my screen. Now it's 6, 9, 12. In other words, it stacks uh, at, like indefinitely. And now if I were to just run and you know attack meanwhile, as you can see, the stacks are going to go down. But as you can also see with the staff, it only consumes a single charge, even though it's critting three times. In S, it, like, essentially, right? So then we got Repel. Pushing at full stamina increases the strength and range of a push by 100%. In other words, double the, the, double the stacker power of the push and, <clears throat> and uh, double the radius of the circle in which your actual push can encounter, uh, f can physically encounter enemy minions or like physically affect enemy minions right so the circle the radius of that circle is is going to be doubled essentially giving you yeah double the range of a given push hope that makes sense <laughs> and lastly we got the career ability talent iron bar thicket pretty self-explanatory instead of this wall being there for six seconds it's there for ten i think this is currently the weakest of her ultimate talents Blood Rage to Thicket, I think, is currently the strongest of her talents. It essentially changes your wall into a, a burst mechanic, right? Like, like think of just a, a little explosion of thorns, right? Um, that staggers bosses heavily, which is a part of why this is such an amazing talent. Not only is it just a great and easy to and fun to place AoE, but as you'll see, the stagger capabilities of this ulti is absolutely insane. And lastly, we got Black Venom Thicket, which isn't that bad either, actually. I, I was surprised by this talent, which is also why I've used it in one of my builds. However, I should add that uh, in the staff build, you can you can really switch between uh, either of these two for this build. So you don't have to get Black Venom Thicket, but I, I felt like I really wanted to include it in a build because it's, it's really an essential way of playing Sister of the Thorn. And I really think it has potential, uh, as I'll show you guys later in the guide. Now, what this does, it, it changes the color, first of all, of your wall. And after the six second delay, what you can't really see there is that it actually has a heavy stagger, as well as adding a, essentially a shrapnel effect to all of the minions in the surrounding area on top of the heavy stagger. So she has an HP pool of 125, putting her in the, in the middle section. Now, a couple things I want to note about the staff here. Oh, also, I forgot to mention one thing regarding her ultimate. In case you guys weren't aware, if you hold down F and then left click, you can actually change the orientation of the ultimate ability. Uh, it's just a one tap, so uh, it's not like you can you can meticulously angle it or anything like that. It's just a one click, left click every time you like whilst you're holding down F, allowing you to you know uh, get sort of like preventing you from having to really reposition yourself simply in order to angle your ultimate ability. You can simply do a one click and that can be really, really useful in situations as well. I just thought I would mention that real quick. As for the new staff, now I think the, the current strongest build is going to be the Moonfire, uh, the Moonfire Thorn, which I'll get into later. But first I want to talk a little bit about her staff build, which is nonetheless quite amazing. Now, this is the talent build I've gone for here. Weave Bond, again, getting temporary HP based off of critical hits. Critical Strikes makes the target bleed, again, playing on this whole guaranteed critical hits. Getting enhanced power in order to hit certain ranged breakpoints. Also, just in general, I feel like this synergizes really, really well with her sort of her DPS method. Radiant Inheritance, uh, also, this also stacks 
I should mention. This also stacks with bleed effects, radiant inheritance, because it's simply too goddamn motherfucking broken, no doubt about it. Morai Hex Doomslight in order to obtain set guaranteed critical hits. And then Black Venom Thicket or Blood Razor Thicket. Both, both of these talents uh, can be run equally. Again, I, th I think this is the stronger talent overall. But I really enjoy using the wall effect as well. And I, I, and I don't want to underestimate, uh, sort of undervalue the power of Black Venom Thicket either. Because it can actually be really, like if you know how to play around it at the right time, you can really get some really sort of 200 IQ plays in with that talent as well. But again, pick whichever you prefer here. Now the idea behind this build is obviously that every time one of your teammates casts in a career ability, you're going to get these guaranteed critical hits. Now if you're shooting into a horde, you obviously want to spread out the attacks in order to get as much value as possible from set bleed. Now the interesting thing about the secondary attack of this, uh, this weapon so let's say you have uh, someone casting this ability, a Chaos Sorcerer, in the far distance. It is important to know that you have to actually get to his cast before it triggers. Because once he actually triggers the cast, then the cast, as you can see here, doesn't go away as long as he's alive. right? So he, he can actually continue his casts while he's up in the air. Now this ability, so it, it deals no damage at all, it just picks them up and disables them. I should also mention that uh, this right-click attack here, it costs uh, 9 sort of total uh, overcharge, allowing you to cast it a total of 5 times. You have 40 overcharge as always. Ooh. Um, then you have the left-click attack, which costs a total of 4 overcharge, allowing you actually 11 casts, it seems. Uh, I, I, like every time I do left clicks, I always end up at 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, if it costs 4 exactly, then it should have actually filled it up. So I'm not sure if it actually costs something like 3.5, if that's possible. Uh, I'll have to double check that as well, but it's, it's in that general vicinity. So, uh, and keep in mind that you can always, if you're at 39 overcharge, then you can still do a full cast, despite the fact that it costs more overcharge than you have. That's an important mechanic. So you only ever, when you're max overcharge, need to get it down just a tiny little bit, and then you can sort of, yeah, cast away, right? Just an important thing to note as well. Now, this build is sort of a semi-support build that still dishes out a bunch of damage, like a ton of damage. It's really good at sustaining itself, and you have this Radiant Inheritance, which just gives you unparalleled potency. But really, let's move on to the absolutely most broken build, which is a Moonfire Bow build. Now, wait, I should note that uh, for my Do You Even Lift here, we're using Chaos Infantry and Barrage on, uh, on our, uh, our staff. Attack speed block cost and swift slaying on our ranged weapon. The reason we're using attack speed here is because we're going to use the guaranteed critical hits to proc swift slaying. And thus we actually don't need to have a very high passive critical hit chance because we already have guaranteed critical hits. So we can instead put in attack speed here. Um, health, block cost, bark skin could be, uh, could in theory be replaced for boon of Shalia. Attack speed, power versus chaos, decanter. Again here, cooldown reduction, stamina recovery, and shrapnel. In theory, you, you could replace cooldown reduction with whatever you feel like in the moment. It could be movement speed if you feel like you need more mobility. Um, and the reason we're not using critical hit chance here, I should mention, is because, again, we got these guaranteed critical hits. So we're trying to replace that property with something more useful now that we actually don't have to worry about critical hitting in order to get, uh, in order to proc swift slaying and get that attack speed. Now, moving on here to the Moonfire Thorn, Cataclysm. Now again, both variations are essentially the same for the Legend and Cata, with the Trinket being the only thing I've swapped around. Here we got Sword and Dagger, Crit Chance, Block Cost, Swift Slaying. Again, here we do have the Critical Hit Chance, because here we're not going for the Guaranteed Crits. Moonfire Bow, Power vs. Armored, Skaven with Barrage. Um, health, Block Cost, Box Skin, Standard. Power vs. Chaos, Attack Speed, Decanter, Standard. Trinket, Crit Chance, Stamina Recovery, Shrapnel, pretty standard. However, the talent build is also a little bit different here. Now, what this build does is really sort of try to maximize the value you can get from the absolutely broken Moonfire Bow, which 
is absolutely broken. I was slightly wrong in my first uh, my first assessment uh, video. I think at least I, I feel like having played a lot more with it now. I do feel like it, it's it's slightly broken. <laughs> no doubt, but no doubt about it. It's broke as fuck. Let's be real. Okay, okay. I was slightly wrong on that. Okay, okay. I admit it. I admit it. I was slightly wrong. It's broken as hell. Okay. Now Isha's bounty and the pale queen's choosing works brilliantly together. Now what this does, it essentially allows you every eight seconds to take a fully charged shot with your Moonfire bow for free, which then also gives you a stack f of power. A and it's just, it it's, it's broken as hell, guys. Now what you need to know about the Moonfire bow is that it has three different attack variations. Uh, see here, like quick shot, charged low, and charged high. Now on paper here, they look fairly similar, right? You got the just left click, which you're almost never going to be using unless you have like an assassin flying in your face that you need to shoot really really quickly then you're only sort of going to poke at things with this attack occasionally when you know it's already at low hp then you have the fully charged attack and I, let's start with the middle actually because the middle attack is the one you're going to be using the most and it's probably also the attack people use the least uh we oddly enough because it's the one in the middle right so it's the way you do charge it up a little bit but not fully now the reasoning here being that first of all it's a lot quicker than a fully charged attack. So you can be a lot more versatile with taking out one, two, three specials, right? And all of those specials are gonna get one shot after a little while. So the idea being that the charge shot is what you're gonna be using whenever you have your passive ability, whenever that's ready, allowing you a full uh, sort of free, uh, free shot. That's when you use the fully charged shot because the fully charged shot into like, let's say a horde is a huge AOE shot, right? And that, in combination with that, <laughs> and then just, you know, bursting out these AoE shots, is insane. Now, the extra shot every 8 seconds might not sound like a lot, but it's, it's, it's a lot. It's really a lot every 8 seconds. Now, keep in mind here that you want to go for the middle shot most of the time. Now, the reason you want to go for the middle shot is because it's lower in overcharge cost. It's... Um, it's low on overcharge cost, it has the, the same amount of single target damage, it just has no AoE burst, uh, like a smaller AoE burst at the very least, it does have a tiny bit, but so uh, the AoE effect is not present very, uh, it's not that strong at least, or that big, but the single target damage is there, which means for special kills, you go for the the second, sh uh, like the middle shot, right? Because it's faster to execute, it costs less overcharge, you don't have to wait for a fully charged shot, so you go... Right? But of course, whenever you do have your passive up, so you get the free shot, you might as well go for the fully charged one into like uh, just a horde of minions. And the damage output of this build, along with the sustain you also get from your passive there, is just absolutely goddamn motherfucking crazy. Now, I want to show you guys uh, another reason why this uh, ultimate talent is absolutely insane. Let's just find a... Uh, Yep. Like the amount of stacker on this talent is insane, okay? Insane and so much fun. All right, so moving on here, I thought we were going to watch a couple of actually slightly random clips that I've pieced together here, just to give some context on a couple of things. Uh, we're not going to go through a whole game today, because uh, I felt like the video was going to be too long. So uh, don't worry, there'll be plenty of, uh, of videos coming up with uh, Sister of the Thorns, including some, uh, some true solo onslaught attempts. So uh, there's plenty to look forward to, but for now, we're going to take a look at a couple of seemingly random clips just to explain a couple of things now one thing i forgot to mention in the previous clip is that on cataclysm difficulty you take exactly 60 damage from overcharging with the staff i felt like that's kind of important and i left that out by accident anyways let's take a look here so starting out um i wanted to showcase a little bit regarding how you can use the thorn ulti versus bosses now by casting it in the length I actually kind of fucked up the placement there, but that's going to make it easier to actually play around. And of course, when you stack up the thorn damage with shrapnel and combine that with barrage, 
then suddenly you, you can do the math, right? Suddenly you're an insane DPS when you also, on top of that, at the added power from your uh, your passive buff from casting your secondary ulti, then suddenly deal some sick damage, right? Even with the stuff. And, you know, it's less obvious how to use this ulti compared to um, the middle one, the, the other thorn ulti where you... You know, cast the AoE spell. That's slightly uh, slightly more intuitive, right? But as you can see, you're casting the uh, ulti and then using the bomb to push him back into the ulti is one way to do it. Stacking up those damage numbers. I'm about to fuck up a block there. So again, casting it in the length, simply to make it easier to play around here. Boom. And like the damage you deal when you stack all of those up is absolutely insane, right? So, uh, anyways, just some less obvious things to, to keep in mind. Die already? <laughs> and a nice way to keep them in check is to wait for their attack combo to start. Because uh, that way they're gonna just keep that going into the wall. So they, they can't actually path around if they're in the middle of an attack sequence. Okay, uh, I don't have my ult yet though. It's almost there. Okay. Here I just wanted to showcase. Okay, don't okay. kill it. Okay, get grabbed over here. Ooh. Need to be a bit closer. Uh, how you can uh, you can get this challenge? Oh, oh, they're, oh. The they're moving to get the kill. Them. No, okay. dude, do you need to <laughs> killing ult? No, I just need to stack or two of them. I was not the best ult. I, I, nice. I wasn't that patient. <laughs> Hi, actor. How you doing? I'm gonna drink a scrap. Okay, almost there. Got it! Thank you guys, you're the best. Nice. Just thought I'd put that in there. I just had a bunch of random people watch this. No! Ha! Did anyone see that? The barrel dupe is real! No! Ha! Did anyone see that? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm so dead. Focus. Wait, actually, let's watch this from the start. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> shit, shit. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm so dead. Focus. Go ahead and circle around to the right. Hi, okay, nope. Sorry, I can dodge it, but... There is the field select. For you! Oh, that was a bad hit. <laughs> Mostly just for fun. Of course, what I didn't know, that they've added a oh, path over there. What the? F I know. I'm even further. Like I'm gonna fail my own IQ test now. No, I'm further than you. Huh? Really? Oh yeah, you gotta loop back. I had a bug here where I couldn't cast my ulti that I've experienced a couple of times in elevators. No See? way. Yeah. Smacking the hands together. Haha! Why can't I ult you? What the fuck? Uh, I swear to god, it wasn't working. What happens with the uh, unchain sometimes? Oh my Smash the uh, extra ult? I oh, know, I was trying to ult you. That is the same strangler. There's the cast patrol. Fuck. Wait, the, wait, the chaos control from earlier. Oh, the fuck? <laughs> get mugged, quick. <laughs> the chaos control from earlier, are you kidding me? I didn't think they'd actually get around you. Wait, smart. Close the door. Wait, no, I know what to do. What do I? I'm trying to trap them down here. How did you kill so many chaos warriors right there? What the fuck? Wait, what did you do? Also, all of them had already been hit by both a. Uh, oops. A. Uh, like I hit them with a bomb okay. and with a barrel already. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense. Then. I was gonna say, there's no way that yeah. Bramble takes him down with full health. Five. Anyway, yeah. I actually find it kind of sad that the strongest way to build her is with the burst damage, set, like the central ulti. Because there's nothing better 
than getting to do things like that. That's just so much fun. Let's be real. Like getting to just block them out like, ah, yeah. <laughs> that is just absolutely glorious. 200 IQ place. <laughs> No floaty kills. Hey, that's a troll. And it's not moving. It's waiting for him. He's like, I'm scared. Where do I need to go? Come back to the wall. Come here, troll. Guys, guys, behind him. Careful. I will focus on the wall. I'm just getting the lock in the troll like this. <laughs> so satisfying. Here's another uh, really good use. Where uh, throwing the fire bomb first and then blocking them all in the fire like that. And literally once the the wall dissipates, no more minions. The whole heart just burned to death. Big brain. Uh -oh. Not an overwatch. Like, I mean, it probably doesn't work, but uh, only one way to find out for science. Oh, no, no. It didn't work. damn it! <laughs> that would be so awesome, though. This one. That would be. Be careful with friendly fire. Woo! Oh, <laughs> that was like. And yeah, th this challenge is so bugged. Also, this this is just me okay, getting wrecked so essentially. Okay. That doesn't it's damage you. We were so focused on trying to get that challenge okay. and it just it just would not work. I should lock in myself in here. Great place to heal. I mean, we do have a spot. <laughs> and really, it's just a couple of really random things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were slow motion we bouncy assassin. But it's not. Oh, yes, sir. That was so hilarious. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like a comment and a subscribe. Very much appreciated. Plenty of Sister of the Thorn videos coming up. I know we didn't cover every single aspect, or every single build, or every single viable, possible way of playing her. And I'm sorry, okay? But there simply wasn't enough time for that. I've been testing for hours. Uh, <laughs> and regardless, I just hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, like, comment, and a subscribe. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.